Hi, everyone. So let's wrap up this discussion of multivariate regression by talking about um, some of the pitfalls and some of the assumptions which underlie its use. And I'm going to finish this discussion by looking at uh, Simpson's effect, or sometimes it's called Simpson's paradox, which is an illustration of how uh, multivariate regression can go horribly wrong if it's uh, not used carefully. So um, let's start at the beginning and remember that the, the basic assumption that we are applying here is that our target variable, y, is well modeled by a linear function of the features. And this is a very strong assumption. Uh, many phenomena out in the real world are not linear. Um, there are actually ways to take the ideas that we've just used and fit, for example, polynomials and exponential functions. And we may have a chance to talk about that or give some homework assignments on it. But let's for the moment stick to the linear case. And leaving aside even the fact that this is just a linear function, um, a function like this has the property that the features act independently on the output target variable. In other words, changes in x1, let's say you increase x1 by 1, then that causes y to increase by m1. Independently of the values of the other variables. And that's a big, uh, a big assumption. It's, it's saying that somehow the features contribute to the target in ways that are completely unrelated to one another. And, and, and the model says that you're free to change any one of the features independently and get a, uh, predict a change in Y without there necessarily being um, any contribution from X. And if you think about it, oftentimes that's not the case. Um, but for small changes, it might be the case. But you, you typically would expect there to be some interaction uh, among the features. So that's one assumption to be aware of. A second thing to be aware of is uh, our numerical problems. And in particular, remember that that the solution to the problem, uh, to the least squares problem, involves inverting a matrix. Namely, we have to compute D inverse X transpose Y to compute M. And uh, we know that the matrix D is invertible if our features are linearly independent. But um, it can still happen that they are mathematically speaking, linearly independent, but still close to not being linearly independent. Uh, if you think about this in vector terms, the features might be, let's say, three vectors in three-dimensional space, which are linearly independent. They point in different directions, but they're still close to one another. And in that, when, when that happens, uh, you can uh, the algorithms for computing the inverses of matrices can produce strange numer they, they can basically cause overflows and underflows and and as a result um, depending on how you how you carry out the numerics here you may get um, answers which are far from what you think they ought to be so there's a problem with numerical instability just because um, the problem of matrix inversion is a complicated numerical problem uh, we're not going to worry about this too much because we're going to be using in our labs very high quality software, and um, they it can handle these um, uh, these instabilities, or at least warn us about them. Okay, but let me uh, let me finish by pointing to uh, a really interesting example of how um, regression can go wrong, which uh, is called Simpson's effect, or sometimes Simpson's paradox. So imagine that we have three laboratories out there in the world that are doing an experiment. And they're measuring, uh, they're doing an experiment where they're looking at some biomarker in a population and measuring the amount of weight that a person varies. And they're trying to do a linear regression to see whether an increase in the amount of the marker causes a, a gain in weight. And each lab does this experiment and they get very, very similar results. As you can see, they, yes, it's kind of a cloud 
of points, but when they do simple linear regression, they get a very clear increasing line, and the slopes aren't that different. Blue lab gets a slope of 1, red lab gets a slope of very close to 1, green lab gets a slope of 0.85. So after all, they're using different participants in the study, and so they, um, they get slightly different results. Uh, the other difference, though, that you might notice is that um, the uh, intercepts are different in these cases. So you notice that the red, uh, the red marker, the, the, even when the marker level is zero, there's a higher weight gain. Uh, and so even though an increase in the marker does cause an increase in weight, the baseline weight starts, weight gain starts higher. And it's in the middle for the green one. And the baseline, the mean, and it's a little bit lower in the blue case. And this might be caused by the fact that um, let's say that they're each drawing from different populations and somehow maybe the levels of the marker in this population are different or they people have different metabolisms because of their heredity. This is called a batch effect where um, because a particular lab is, so to speak, working with a particular batch of samples, there may be a variation in the results among the different uh, studies. So um, they're interested in seeing whether an increase in the marker level causes a, an increase in weight gain, and it does, but the sort of baseline is different in the three examples. What happens if you take the results of the three labs and you combine them into a single experiment without accounting for the fact that they were done under different circumstances and in different places? And that's what's shown here in the upper left. We take all the points, the blue points, the green points, and the red points, and put them on a single plot. And then we find a, a least squares fit to that. And look at what we get. Suddenly, our line is sloping down. We see that an increase in the marker causes a reduction in weight gain. So you would, on the one hand, think that you would get better results from more samples. But when you pool the results of separate experiments, it completely turns the result on its head. And um, this, is, uh, this happens a lot. And in fact, if you, if you read about um, experiments sometimes that get published in the newspaper, you sometimes wonder if what we're hearing about is, um, is Simpson's effect. But uh, the, the baseline warning here is that if you're going to combine the results of experiments that were done under different conditions, you have to be very cautious about batch effects because even simple algorithms like linear regression can get turned on their head uh, and give you completely misleading results. Even though the mathematics of this is solid, um, the uh, underlying experimental conditions have thrown a big wrench into our solution. So we will end our discussion of multivariate linear regression with that uh, warning.